Right, it's dark recording. Hello, YouTube. I was going to say eBay then. Hello, YouTube. Um, welcome back to yet another fun-filled, factual episode of whatever the hell it is I'm doing. Uh, I've been asked this morning to explain what a crystal is. And a crystal is that shiny metal object there. Every Amiga's got one. Every Mac 68K has got one. Uh, every most old school computers at some point somewhere will have an oscillating crystal at some point. It will be usually a little silver device like that. It could be a very slim canister type shape. It could be half that size. But it will have a crystal somewhere. I'm not sure they use them today in such large forms, but they still use them today. But anyway, what is it? Well, a crystal is it's basically uh, an oscillating circuit inside there and the vibration creates a resonance which uh, which creates a precise frequency that the computer uh, I'm not sure if the computer measures it or it takes a signal from it to generate a particular megahertz or kilohertz or gigahertz or whatever the hell it is now in this case I can't see what that says on it can you? probably not Let's, just, so let's say that is a 50 megahertz crystal. This is, you probably can't read it on the camera, but this is a XC 68060RC 50A. So that is classed as a 50 megahertz CPU. And how they class the CPU is, theoretically, uh, they run they say, the same production run of CPUs, they run them at a certain speed. Measure the temperature and accuracy of data performed in its throughput, or something like that. If it's all within a certain boundary of um, acceptable ness, 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 then it is passed off, and that is a 50 megahertz CPU. <coughs> in the case of the 68060, generally speaking, um, they were all pretty much 50 megahertz. They did do a 66, and they did do a 75. But they are a different kettle of fish altogether. It's the same CPU, but they were missing MMU, they were missing FPU, or a combination of each either. They didn't even mark them up correctly when they were new. They used to sell them for embed <coughs> embedded processors, um, processors. so they'd uh, ship them to do various jobs and sell them cheaper without an FPU or MMU. And when they didn't have enough stock, they'd ship them the full one and just mark them up as an EC, when in fact it was a full CPU, but that's not what we're here for. So what is a crystal? Well a crystal is, generally speaking, matched to the CPU. So if that's a 50, that should be a 50, and vice versa. Now generally, 9 times out of 10 soldered to the board. I have unsoldered this at some time in the past, put little pegs in. You can see there it's got 6 pegs because you can get oscillators or crystals that are half size it does the same function the pins are uh, interchangeable as long as you get pin 1 in the correct place so if you wanted to make this run at 66 instead of the said 50 you would put a 66 megahertz crystal in there usually one pin will be marked differently to the others to denote the square edge pin 1 um, without putting my glasses on and a close look, I can't see which one it is. I think it's, I think it's that one. Don't know. But anyway, that is what a um, oscillator crystal does. Generally speaking, they're just called crystals. If this was a 68030, you would find that they sold. I think they sold them at 25 megahertz and up all the way up to 50 but what people found out pretty quickly was that the 25 megahertz CPUs were more than happy to run at 30 or 35 or some variation of that quite happily then they started clamping heat sinks on because the processors get hotter got hotter than they were ever intended to run Things did go a little bit south when they had the 68040 CPU because that was twice the speed of the 68030 but it had issues with heat 
um, from its initial release uh, until the day they stopped production of them. It was always a hot processor. Even on the late revisions, it was a hot processor. So when the 68060 came along, um, I think the die size was shrunk. I could be wrong there, but I think it was. It runs cooler, it runs faster. It is very much, if, you can sit, if you're comparing it to a PC, you, it would be comparable to a Pentium. Whereas a 68040 would be 486-ish, more or less. Um, so the 68060 is the daddy of CPUs for an Amiga or a Macintosh. Although they never actually fitted them officially in the Macs. I think the 040 was as far as they went. So if you want to have a fast 68060, you just buy the cheapest 68060 and put the fastest crystal you can find and away you go. Well, no, it's not as simple as that. If you have an XC, these are early production ones, there will be um, a code number stamped on there and that will denote uh, year of manufacture, more or less. And it will tell you the die size and all the rest of it. You need a late revision 68060 if you want a fast one, which I used to know the number, but I don't now. It's got a six, was it six, seven, seven, oh, something, six, four, I can't remember. But if you have a late revision CPU, which once upon a time were plentiful and common, and you could buy them. I used to buy 68060s for about 40 pounds. I think I got one free once. Did a job for some minute. There you go. There's a CPU, mate. Ah, oh, cheers. Now they're going for 80, 90, 100, and above because you just can't get them anymore. And people know that the late revision CPUs can be clocked up to at least 66 megahertz. And if um, the gods are smiling kindly on you, 75, 80, uh, and above, if you're very lucky. The fastest I ever got one to run was, I think, 80 something megahertz. I used to have an adjustable crystal. It was a printed circuit board with a, um, um, a thingy adjuster in there. I was going to give you the name of that, but I can't remember what I'm saying. And I could clock it up very gently as you turned turn the little rear stat, that's the word. Um, and it, um, I could increase the megahertz by sort of increments of 10 megahertz or 5 if you were very careful. Uh, and, but I plugged it in the wrong way around one day and blew it up, blew it to smithereens. I did try getting another one, but the guy who used to make them doesn't make them anymore. Uh, I don't know what his parts list was, I have asked him. I've asked him for a bill of materials and I'll make my own, but... Anyway, so there we are. So that is what a crystal is. You will find that the Amiga will have one on or around not on, but around the CPU on the motherboard, if this was, say, 1200 or something. Um, sometimes they have two. They'll have one for the CPU and one for the motherboard itself. That is because the motherboard is synced. Everything will run at whatever it is, 7 megahertz. So a division of that will run the disk drive, the PAL signal for the screen, or NTSC, or whatever it is. If you mess about with that 7 megahertz and try to make it run at 8, or 10 or 12 or 14 um, uh, yeah double it up you will find that the screen buggers up the disk drive doesn't work anymore and the machine uh, has a bit of a fit so you can't really do that not without adding some logic there are ways around it but it's not very successful to be honest uh, but if it's asynchronous ie the, the motherboard runs from its own crystal and the CPU runs from a and another um, then you can have some fun with clocking it up and doing all kinds of silly things and the crystals did come in peculiar numbers if this was a 50 megahertz say you could probably buy a 55 megahertz or a 58 or a 60 or a 60 I've got a 64 never seen a 64 before 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 um, but they are out there they are commonplace, there are plenty of them about, there is no need to pay silly money for them. Every bit of uh, electronics over the last 50 years has used something like this. So they're everywhere, so don't pay silly money. Don't buy any of this rare nonsense that they keep putting on eBay to make things uh, seem more expensive than they are. Like Amigas themselves, they made millions of them. 
every so often you'll see an A500 rare. I don't think so, mate. Um, so that is what a crystal oscillator is, or an oscillating crystal. So there you go. That's it, boys and girls. I'm not going to do tech talks, so I don't know what the hell I'm talking about. But I can give you a brief overview of what does what, if anybody wants to know anything. Um, but if you want to know the um, polarizing resonance of a transistor under load at 14 megahertz, I, I can't tell you all that stuff. There are much more clever people than I. So that's it for me for now. I might do uh, a game playthrough shortly. I might, I might do a stream. not done a stream for a while. So I'll probably do a stream. I'll have another cup of tea and, um, you know, scratch my bum or something and then do a stream. It's all exciting stuff. It all happens here in Yorkshire. In Yorkshire. I don't live in Yorkshire anymore. It all happens here in Milton Keynes. So until next time, boys and girls, have fun.